Hi everybody, it's Angie and I'm just popping in here really quick to give you the quick and dirty. If you're suffering from post shoveling uh, all t sort of tangled up in knots, this is going to help you to just kind of ease those shoveling muscles a little bit. All right, so we're going to find our seat sitting up nice and tall. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Bring your shoulders up to your ears. And as you exhale out the mouth, roll the shoulders back and down. Just do that with me one more time. Inhale and squeeze the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. Good. This time we're going to inhale, reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, sweep the arms down and wrap the arms up into either self-hug, keep breathing, hands on the shoulders, or you can do eagle arms if the hands will wrap up and hook or touch the palm. And we're just going to do a little side to side sort of tick-tock motion. Now this can be just hands on the shoulders. You can let the head and neck go however you want. It's just giving a little stretch into the shoulders, the upper back and the side body. You can range the head or be creative with how you want to turn the head and just explore that a little bit. And then notice which arm is on top. We're going to switch it. As you inhale, reach the arms up and exhale, cross the other arm over top, either self hug or eagle arms and same thing here. And you'll notice too, you might feel this tightness in your shoulders in your neck, in your back, in your side body, those sort of um, lateral muscles uh, underneath the side of the shoulder <laughs> can get super tight when you use those. It's always important when you're shoveling to remember to engage your core. Try to switch sides, so we tend to have one side that we favor. So you wanna try to switch it up and really squeeze your belly in when you're lifting that snow. Bend your knees and get low to the center of gravity. Good, we're gonna come back to center on your inhale breath, reach the arms up. And exhale, release the hands down. Bring your fingertips behind, stretch your legs out in front. Take a little bit of a lift in the back body, a lift in the front body, I should say. So open the chest, roll the shoulders back. Lift the collarbones up towards the sky and just take a big, bright breath here. Feet flexed, heart open. Beautiful. Good, all right, and keeping that opening in the front body, take an inhale breath, reach your arms up, exhale out the mouth and reach forward towards the legs. You can rest your hands on your legs wherever they land, tuck the chin a little, and we're gonna take a honeybee breath here, right into the back body, so wherever you're feeling this, in your back, your low legs, take a big breath in, and hum. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, walk yourself up. <laughs> come to bring your legs around to the side, come to tabletop, and you'll move your blanket out of the way. You're gonna come into either child's pose here to stretch the back, so the knees can be together or a little bit apart, arms reaching forward or heads resting on your hands. Or if you prefer, you can take a downward dog here. And we'll just take a couple of breaths. Drawing the belly in, lifting the hips up. You can bend your knees, press your hips up towards the sky, and then drop your outer heels down. Oh yeah. It's a good stretch for the legs and the shoulders as well. And then let's go ahead and lower the knees down to the mat. Pad your knees as needed. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Shift your hips as far forward as they'll go, so the knee is over the ankle. And we're gonna take uh, back toes can be curled under or pointing back, whatever's comfortable there. We're going to take a side bend here. So I'm going to show you the front view of this so you can see what happens. So the first thing we're going to do is pull the belly in and drop the tailbone down. So belly engages, pelvis tilts back slightly, reach your arms up. We're going to cross the arms and hold the forearms or the elbows. Whatever you can reach, maybe your hands are here. Keep breathing here. It's important that you draw the belly in 
And then as you exhale, lean a little to the right side, away from the back leg. Keeping the heart lifted here. <sighs> you can also do this one with the hand behind the back and holding the elbow with that right hand. Remember to breathe. So again, here we're working to lengthen that side body that we use those muscles, those lat muscles in the, in the low back. Not the low back, but they're right here. Okay, let's release, come back to center. Release your hands down, come back to hands and knees, and we'll step the left foot forward. Shift your hips forward, knees over ankle, draw the belly in, engage the core. You'll feel the stretch in your, in your psoas. Reach arms up, cross the arms, or hold the elbow. Draw the belly in again, just making sure it's engaged, and then slowly lean over to the left side. Whew, now this feels a lot more open for me for some reason, and you might find that too, especially if you tend to favor one side when you're shoveling, right? We always have that side that's our go-to, it's our strong side, and uh, that's great, but the more we work that side, the stronger that side becomes, and it can start to create disbalances. So I always try to switch it up and try to train my less adept side <laughs> and become a little bit ambidextrous with my shoveling. But really, in remembering to draw the belly in, engage your core. Let's take an inhale, come back to center. Release hands down. Good, okay, so let's go ahead and step forward to forward bend. Again, this little bit of a hang here will help to create traction. Sometimes when we do heavy lifting and things like shoveling, it compresses the spine, right? It kind of scrunches it down with gravity and then the weight that we're carrying. So this will help to use gravity in the reverse. Bend your knees. Let your upper body hang or dangle. You can cross your arms if you want. Turn the neck and head a little. Just allow the spine to hang. Let's take one more breath here. Be aware if you just had breakfast that you don't want to be upside down for too long. Good. And then let's bring the hands to the hips. Draw your elbows up towards the ceiling. Look forward and inhale up with a flat back, strong core. Oh, look, just standing. Release the hands down and just take a nice, deep, long breath here in through nose, out through mouth. Beautiful. Okay, now check that your feet are slightly wider than hip distance apart. So my hip distance apart means my ankles are under my knees, which are under the fronts of my hip bones where the leg attaches, the femur attaches into the hip. But we're gonna take the feet a little bit wider. We're gonna bend our knees a little. Take your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. You can bend your elbows, draw the shoulders back, draw the belly in and inhale, lift up to the front body. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold over the legs. We're gonna keep the knees quite generously bent here. Turn the neck and head when you get to the bottom. Take some breath. And think about lifting the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Don't let them dump down by the ears. You could be trying to pull the hands apart, which will help to stretch into the shoulders again. That's a nice sort of release for the upper back and shoulders, even into the neck. And just take a breath or two here. Keeping the knees bent. One more breath. Good, really letting go there. Nice, and then we're gonna release, bring the hands down to the mat. You can step gently back to hands and knees. All right, so there's one more, two more things I wanna do with you. We're gonna to come to laying down on our backs. Um, hmm, you know, a four square is quite useful here if you're feeling a little bit of tightness in your outer hip. So that's a nice little pose to do. You can take your right ankle on your left knee and just find what works there for you, maybe hand on the knee. You guys have been doing these poses with me. You know what you like probably by this time. Uh, you've been doing these poses with me for months, possibly years. So just using your breath to release any tightness in that outer hip there. So many different ways that you can enjoy this pose. I'm just choosing the hand on the knee and the heel because this is what feels good in the moment. Good. We can take this into a little happy baby. Hands on the ankles or the feet. 
You can rock side to side if it feels good. It's important to stretch this out after you do any activity like shoveling. The thing about shoveling is, is it's not something that we do regularly. We don't do it all year round. And then when the season starts, our shoveling muscles are a little bit out of practice. <laughs> so we just kind of ease into that shoveling uh, gently the first time or two. So let's change sides, bring your left ankle on your right knee. This side's always a little bit tighter for me. We'll use some breath here, a little bit of movement if it feels good. And one more breath here. So yummy. And feel free to stay in any of these stretches that feel like your body really needs it. Sometimes you'll hit on one and your body goes, oh yeah. And if that happens, don't rush out of it. Just enjoy there as long as you want to. All right, let's uncross the legs. We're gonna bring the feet down. Place the feet flat on the floor. Knees bent, ankles under knees. Feet are about as wide as your hips apart. Arms down beside the body. We're gonna take a little bridge pose here which can be really good massage for the back, for the spine. You can lift the hips up and walk the shoulders under the back a little bit. Press down through all four corners of your feet. Press down through your upper arms. You can even bring your hands into uh, sort of robot arms if you want to. And just move the roof of your mouth a little towards the top of your head. We'll take a couple breaths here. This really it activates and stabilizes through the hips and the pelvis and gives a nice little um, arch to the back. When we're shoveling, sometimes we're stooped over. So we want to do some back strengthening, reversing the stooping, going into a bit of an extension. One more breath. Good, and then gently release as you exhale, slowly coming back down to the mat. Oh yeah, good, beautiful. And then the last thing that the doctor ordered for this shoveling situation is a laying twist or any kind of a twist, but I really quite like the laying twist. You can do any kind you want. I'm gonna offer a double knee twist. You can do windshield wipers if you want. Bring your knees in, lower your knees out to the left side, stretch your arms out in a T. You can weight the knees with the left hand. Head can be center or turning to the right. Now this can be really good uh, for the back and the shoulder because our shoulder, our pectoral gets a little bit of a stretch here. So when we're shoveling, we're kind of reaching forward. This can be shortened. It also gives this um, twisting stretch in the side body, which helps to balance out, especially, especially, especially if you favor one side when you're shoveling. So what you're going to find is if you favor one side when you're shoveling and you're always throwing it over one shoulder, that you're gonna to wanna to do the twist the opposite way, right? So if I shovel and twist over my right shoulder, then I'm gonna to wanna to twist the other way to counter that. And you'll feel it in your yoga. Let's change sides, squeeze the belly, come back to center. You'll feel it. Let's go over to the other side, exhaling knees to the right. You'll feel it particularly here in the twist because the side that you don't use as much is going to feel way tighter. And that's the side I want you to hang out on longer. So just check it out in your body. If you do have asymmetry, I'd like you to move into the pose that's the tightest or the side that's the tightest and stay there. You can be doing windshield wipers instead and just leaving your knees on one side and using some ha breath here. You can stay as long as you want to these twists, you know, five minutes can really uh, create some gentle and beautiful releases in the shoulder, in the spine, in the hip, in the back. And we're just breathing to help our bodies let go and release that tension. Doing it on the exhale. Stay as long as you need in that twist on the side that feels tightest. 
And then when you're ready, you can come into Shavasana for a short moment, three to five minutes. The thing with shoveling is that um, it's something that can do our back in because it's bearing weight and it's stooping forward and twisting at the same time. Come into Shavasana whenever you're ready. And those three things put together are um, not, <laughs> not happy news for our backs usually. So that's why it's important to really hug in through the core muscles when you're doing your shoveling. So let's go ahead and release here. Take a few breaths, close your eyes. And just allow your body to melt into the floor. You could do this session, this little mini session twice a day or once a day after shoveling until your body comes back to balance. Thank you so much. I love all you guys. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.